All right, this is a little bit about who we are and our history. Uh, we've been around since 1991. We're from Chicago. Uh, we're essentially an IDTF. We monitor patients remotely. There's a call center there with over uh, 150 uh, seats. We receive uh, mostly cardiac patients uh, traditionally. So we see ECG coming across the screen periodically if it's an event monitor. Uh, or we, it's uploaded from a physician's office if it's a halter monitor. And we have real-time telemetry, which means uh, we, it's automatically detects an alarm, just like in the hospital, sends us a strip, and we evaluate it, whether the patient should be uh, sent to the ER, or we're just uh, capturing an event. We, we uh, have over 3 million patient intera interactions per year. It's actually up from that, and we're pushing 450,000 patients annually at this point. We have two call centers, actually, one in Chicago and one in Philadelphia. And uh, we have you know, four to almost 4,000 cardiology groups. That's been our prime uh, customer. We also have uh, clinics and hospitals as, as well in their cardiology department. And our revenue's been about $130 million last year. Uh, and we, we started home sleep testing this year. So that's we're departing from just being uh, basically cardiac. This is kind of the campaign I started about nine months ago because uh, most of the people in our space, they're just cardiac monitors, they're just halter or event monitors, and we have been looking at, at doing many more things. We have, we're a manufacturer, we have sensors that do pulse ox, spirometry, uh, blood pressure, uh, scale. We have all those things. We are not marketing them. We built them. They're sitting on the shelf. Uh, we did some pilots, and we're still we're still hoping the business will come because it's just not here yet at it, the it, size level that we would need it to be. But we've already invested in it, and now we're you know looking how how do we best you know capitalize on that. We uh, uh, the sound bites that I sent out to the folks about innovation, integration, aggregation, and agnostic interfacing. We don't have to build it anymore ourselves. Agnostic interfacing means that uh, we're going to use whatever technology has been invented out there because technology is not the problem. It's basically the application and the business fit. Technology is very, very simple. Uh, we can solve many, many things, and that's all engineers want to do, but the problem is we'll get paid for. Uh, the, the, the aggregation, uh, word uh, or explain in a second and uh, integration basically everybody's the EMR bound uh, EMR integration we we've done I think 11 sites so far on requests so we our, our, our data will uh, you know, integrate right into the uh, physician or hospital EMR which is going to be mandatory for any of the companies in this in this in this space This has been, uh, you know, the, the selling engine that, that folks have been using uh, in our sales group. Uh, basically, go after cost savings, improving quality and outcomes, time savings, uh, increased revenues, and ease of use. This is, this is what I looked at when I was in the hospital. Uh, you know, cost savings, ease of use, and so forth. But this is, what, this is basically what our customers are always looking for. And the one in the middle there, work, work and data flow efficiencies, is something we're proficient at because we are a very, very big call center, a very big telemonitoring center, center, and it just appears that this seems to be what everybody's zeroing in on us now about. We are able to help uh, the physicians, physicians' offices in the hospital get their data where they want it, how they want it, and flowing the way they want it. Which, if that's overlooked today, you're just not going to you're not going to thrive. Uh, this is our basic, this is an internal uh, thing I did for our roadmap to it's kind of hooky, but this is basically how we built, built, built any business unit. We start with the sensor, whatever it's sensing, the technology then follows it, and it could be a variety of technologies, and what's the physiological application. Then from that point on, we want to be wireless, and we are at this point all the time. And then what's the clinical application? Different meaning, you know, we can measure blood pressure or we can measure... Uh, yeah, we have a way of measuring stroke volume. So what's the, what is the clinical application that will support that? And that clinical ac application, then we put a service wrap around that, and now, is that a business? Will somebody pay us for that? And, and we are a business, so we can't do it unless, unless we can make money at it. This is one of our latest, uh, uh, just, it's just an innovation, it's just basically, uh, being able to look at our reports, 
with the newest and latest platform that we had in April. <laughs> so we want to, again, be, we don't care what, this is just a report viewer. We have a lot of physicians and a lot of hospitals still actually faxing us orders, ask, asking that the reports get faxed. And we're just trying to kind of push them along, you know, get on the highway because it's surprising how much we still have that way. I mentioned ER immigration. Uh, this is aggregation. This is what I mean by that. We started something in, uh, in the spring. Uh, we have a lot of uh, AF patients. This is the, this is the first one. I, I call this the teleclinic. Teleclinic is essentially identified subset of patients that most all of our patients were just monitored to diagnose. Once they found out they had the arrhythmia or the problem, then they were treated and, and, and we never saw them again. But for AF, uh, we must have 90,000 AF patients a year. Atrial fibrillation. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, it, it, it's a nasty little thing. It seems to be benign, but it's a major ca cause of stroke. And uh, it, it, some people don't feel very, very, very well at all when they have it. Some people don't even know they have it. Uh, it. It comes on from many different ways, but the bottom line is that if they need to be treated, uh, if they're diagnosed and need to be treated, the first thing they're treated with is usually a drug, and if that works, that's fine. But they're also treated with Coumadin, which is a blood thinner, which is also, uh, it's a very tedious balance of whether you bleed or you clot, clot. So it's almost more dangerous than the, the AF, but it, it, these patients are mostly on Coumadin. It has to be closely monitored. You have to tell them Coumadin is rat poison too. Yeah, Coumadin is rat poison. poison. It thins your blood. It keeps you from clotting. You take a little too much, you, you bleed. You take a little, not enough, you clot. Clot, stroke, or, or an MI. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, so the, the patients, the, the, the new uh, evolving treatment, and it's both surgical and both uh, uh, semi-non-invasive with catheters, is they do an ablation in the heart where they actually cut the pathways uh, to prevent the fibrillation. And it, and, and it forms a scar, and it, it, it's supposed to work, and many times it does. But they have been doing this procedure for uh, actually a few years, and they just see them maybe once in six months and the next year, and they have no idea and they haven't routinely checked these patients to see if they're still fi you know, uh, fibrillating. Uh, it, it, following up and using our monitoring to follow up is just not, it's not, it's not what's been done. So a lot of the leading uh, electrophysiologists have been, you know, well, my way is the best way. There must be six, seven ways to do this. My way is the best way. You know, your way is not as good as mine. Nobody knows because nobody's measuring it. So they have, started to use us to follow their patients up. So they do, they do a, a study with our, our service before the patient procedure, and then they do it at uh, one month, three months, six months, nine months, up to two years. Because it's a scarring process, it's not an instant fix. So if you have a lot of atrial fibrillation before and afterwards you're gonna have a little bit less, in three months you should have less and less and less until it's gone. And when it's gone, you can take them off the Coumadin, the, the rat poison and literally their lives come back because it, 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 the worry about that, even from the patient, is fairly high, and the physician. Uh, so anybody can get, get their patients off of Coumadin, you know, they, did, they, they made the cure. They're using us to follow these patients. Now, the, the patients, uh, you know, that's a, that's a procedure. You have to you send a script in and, and do the enrollment and so forth for every one of those monitoring sessions, and it's kind of laborious. Uh, it takes a lot of resources. So what I did is I put together the AF teleclinic, meaning they want to follow the routine of every three months for two years. So all they have to do is uh, I'm going to send my patient to, uh, to you know, I'm taking my patient in for the procedure. I want, I want the AF teleclinic. So they click, and we schedule every one of those monitoring sessions by that one click. They don't have to come back to us. It's a standing order for, for every three months. And then every time they get a report, Rather than looking through the papers of seeing, okay, what was it last month? Even if they have an MR, uh, uh, MR they're going to have to click back to see what it was. We're, on our reports, we're putting the results of all the tests on this patient for the follow-up so they can see a serial comparison of everything instantly. So now they can, they've just saved time in, in their office. They can see on a single report 
all the relevant data. And the same would go for a follow-up of a, uh, a cryptogenic stroke patient that ha they believe may be uh, AF or is cardiac related. They have no evidence of it. Uh, the, ED, the ED physicians uh, kind of feel that the patients are falling through the cracks because the neurologist is not necessarily going to put them on a cardiac monitor because they're not cardiologists, and the cardiologist is not going to take them as a patient because they have no evidence of a cardiac problem. And the ED, you know, once they're out of the ER, you know, bye-bye, they're done with them. So they see, they're seeing them come back with strokes, which was probably from atrial fibrillation. What they want to do is they want to admit them into this virtual service vis-a-vis -vis stroke teleclinic for us to monitor maybe seven to 10 days, follow them up to see if we find the AF. And if they do, they're off to the treatment plan. And, and, and if not, they are the neurologist or the PCP patient. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to add blood pressure to the mix because if it was a blood pressure related, we can also see that. So now we're going to, you know, blood pressure is a losing proposition to just do it by itself, but if you combine that with doing, doing uh, arrhythmia monitoring for this, this uh, population of patients, it becomes pretty valuable because now you can do a rule out on, you know, on whether it's neurological or, or non-cardiac non versus cardiac. And you actually will, will find out. It, in, in a short time. Uh, there, we could also be doing the INR, which is measuring, measuring the, the, uh, the clotting time if, if, uh, if those patients are on that. And the ACT means uh, uh, ambulatory cardiac telemetry. And then medication management. And a, lot of the, a lot of these folks you know, are on medications, and medications got them into trouble. And they need maybe reminders or some, there's lots of devices out there that will, will you know, track what's been taken and not taken to some point. So it, we're looking for bundling services together to make a more focused, complete, remote uh, patient care. So that right now, they would have to go to three or four different companies to get all this. Nobody, no one company has put, thought to put them together. So that's, that's kind of the direction we're going and why I brought that up.